Okay, last item, a couple safety and other very important practical tips before you go into the lab this week. So, in this lab, the dominant light source we're going to use is a helium neon laser. It looks something like this. And we'll talk about lasers later, okay? But basically, it gives you a very narrow wavelength of emission around 633 nanometers, okay? Now, this thing basically uses a helium neon gas, which is excites with a really high voltage in order to create a plasma, which creates atomic transitions and gives you the emission from the neon atoms, okay? To, do, to create this big voltage, essentially, there's a high voltage source here. And when you disconnect the laser from here, there can still be a very high voltage across the electrodes, the cathode and the anode. So be very careful. If you disconnect the laser, there'll be two metal leads here. Do not touch them to your skin. It won't kill you, but I've done it myself two or three times, and it gives you a nasty shock. And so shut the laser down, leave it attached. Don't just pull the cords out, shock your buddy or anything like that. He will not be happy with you, okay? Now, a little bit about the detectors in the lab as we start using them. They're basically silicon PIN photodiodes, and they convert electrical current, I mean photons, number of photons to electrical current. They have one square centimeter of active area, okay? And you're, this is the detector there, and you can see it right in there. That's where the, the photodiode is. And they can only be damaged if you have greater than one watt per centimeter squared. So you have to ask yourself, do you have to worry? Because our laser is only milliwatts, right? And so we have to worry about ever damaging this. Well, yes, you do. This is one watt per centimeter squared. This is power per unit area. If you take one milliwatt laser or something like that, and you focus it down to a small enough area, you will exceed a power density greater than one watt per centimeter squared. And so whenever we're recording laser intensity, there's something this is called an attenuator you put on the front of this that attenuates the signal by 100x. And so you'll need to set the power meter, either one of these types, there's a couple types, to tell it whether or not you're sticking the attenuator on there, which helps make sure you don't fry the detector. These are expensive. This thing is like $600, so don't fry it, please. So if you're using the laser, put the attenuator on there, okay? And make sure the power detector is set such that it knows that the attenuator is put on there, and then you'll be safe with this, okay? All right. There's some oh, there's a manuals online for this as well. Now, when you're in the lab, there's two points I want to make. First off, when you're setting up your laser experiment, and don't worry, we're not going to do anything this complicated, the laser should never go above table level, out a door or a window, okay? If you have to bring your head down to look at the level of the laser or some optical component, just turn it off. The reason why is I do not want the laser going into your eyes. And so you're like, oh, it's only a milliwatt. Well, why is that a big deal? Well, your eye is a lens, right? And so it does the same thing. It can take that laser light, focus it down to a tiny spot on your retina, and damage it. And furthermore, which is more dangerous? Having the laser light hit your eye in a dark room or a, or a light room? Most of this lab, you will turn the lights off so you can see the laser well. But then you have to be the most careful because in a dark room, your pupil of your eye opens the most to let the most light in, right? And so then you're in the most exposed state where laser light could cause the most damage to your eye. And so always keep the laser below your head level, okay? It should always be down in plane near the table. You never need to shine it up into the air anywhere, okay? Now, when you start making setups, you could make setups like these, but they will be a disaster if you don't follow the procedures this week. And in the procedures, what I tell you to do is that when you add your first part, you set up the laser, you add your first part, you add a mirror, the first thing you do is you shine the mirror, you rotate the mirror such that you reverse the light back into the laser. You shine the laser back into itself. Don't worry, it's not going to blow the laser up. Then what you'll do is you'll add a new part and have that mirror align it to the next part and then reverse it again. So you add one part each time and each time you add the next part you want to reverse the light back because these, are, these optical systems are like math, they're mathematical. You can go in forward or in reverse. That's how you know you keep good alignment. 
If you have trouble with this, come find me and ask me, and I can explain the procedure in pers person. But it's very simple. Add a part. Before you try to move up, set up the next part of the optical system, reverse it back to the laser. Then add the second part and have the light go on to the second part. Reverse it on and on. What always helps me is I take a white card on the laser with a hole in it where the laser comes out, and that gives me a larger area as I reverse the system to hit a target on that white card and kind of then move it into the little hole in the card, which is where the laser comes out. So you'll start to see this when you get in the lab, okay? That is pretty much all the tips you need to, to get started. Again, the, the manuals and the instruction I give you for the lab are really good, and they'll bring you up from basic parts, and let's get started.